Well, hello everybody and welcome back to the men's team final and individual qualification where there is an enormous amount going on here. All the male gymnasts have been competing today in the team final and at the same time qualifying for individual finals uh, with the results deciding the team champions and which gymnasts will qualify for the individual all around and the apparatus finals later on in the games. As you can see there, Wales are ahead in this team final. As far as the individual all-around competition is concerned, Daniel Lee from Jersey, he leads the field on 78.050. Joe Kemlin Jones, uh, second, and Josh Cook, only two, co uh, two per country allowed. So that those are the two Welsh gymnasts that will um, be able to compete in that team final. And this is the third of three subdivisions. So a lot of gymnastics has happened. It's about to go to a whole other level with England, with Scotland, New Zealand, Australia, Canada, Cyprus, all in the mix here. Now, sitting alongside me to talk you through the competition, Christine Still to my right and Craig Heap uh, to my left, Chris uh, Wales. What an outstanding storming competition they had in the last uh, session that we had here. They did. They showed tremendous team spirit and heart. Uh, they, they gave away a couple of marks on the vault. They went for big, big vaults and... Uh, they had on two of their counting vaults, hands down. So there was a little, there was a little bit given away there, perhaps two marks, but that was almost their only real mistakes. And um, they certainly impressed. It was a, a really fighting, spirited performance. Well, they're sitting on a score of uh, 236. Uh, point three, which could well challenge for a medal. Um, we know that Canada have had a few injuries within their team. We'll get to that very shortly. Um, Australia as well, a strong, but not as strong as they have been in the past, Craig. So this could go right down to the wire. I mean, could we see England, Scotland, Wales on the podium? Well, that would be the perfect ending to a fantastic day of gymnastics, but like we say, Wales were absolutely fantastic in the earlier round, but there were a couple of little errors and they really had to go clean as possible for a podium finish. For me, England are the by far the favourites in this round, but Scotland have a good chance. Wales might get up there. Canada's lost their star performer, really, so th that will change the dynamics of that team, how they feel with the best gymnasts not able to compete. Australia, they're always up for a fight in the Commonwealth Games, so, yeah, it's going to be a great final session of gymnastics. One billion global TV viewers. Well, the stage is set for the final session spectators. of qualification. Uh, so just a reminder of how this works. Now, for the team final, each country can put up four gymnasts and then the best three scores are added together to the in the team that total on each apparatus. And then all the scores from the six pieces of apparatus are added together the to give the full the team supremacy. total. Gymnastics the 18 highest scoring gymnasts other. across all six pieces of apparatus are going to qualify uh, for the all-around final, while the, the top point. eight on each apparatus advance and to the apparatus finals. Perfect routines with speed and agility. Artistry and grace elevate the gymnasts to levels of performance that are beyond the realms of the imagination. This sport requires breathtaking endurance, determination, and focus. Endurance to compete across all apparatus, determination to excel the competition. Just a word to say that this is not part of the team and final. Focus this to is just a little bit of entertainment. What is required to be a champion. As the fans are flocking in, each gymnast the will perform all the way around a routine that pushes them to their one, physical limit and will simply take your breath away. in the world of gymnastics. Away. These incredible displays of prowess will need no words to inspire each and every one of you.
Prepare yourselves for the ultimate in drama and excitement. Cheer on our superheroes as they perform at their very best with displays that show both technical and artistic mastery. This is a time to suspend belief, to let the imagination and artistry of some of the world's most talented gymnasts transport you to another world. Welcome to the incredible Birmingham 2022 Commonwealth Games Gymnastics Competition. We're all about positivity, so everyone, do your best. And gymnasts, we're ready. Arena Birmingham, let's count them down. Ten, Ten nine, eight, eight seven, seven, six, six five, four, three, two, two one. Let's Woo! go! Australia then start their bid for a team medal on rings. Clay Mason Stevens, Jesse Moore, Tyson Ball, and James Bacretti. And Canada and Cyprus. Cyprus represented by could well be in with a chance. The Georgiou brothers are very, very good. Maria Georgiou, Socrates Pelakouris, and Michalis Harry. On the pommel horse, Canada. Canada also in with a shout. However, they are without a very, very strong gymnast that really builds their team score. Rene. Kanoya not Jason competing. Rappersad and Chris Kaji. A relatively young team. It'll be very, and very interesting Scotland. to see how well they perform under pressure. Represented Scotland could Bain. really surprise here. Frank Baines. Frank Baines back from Adel retirement Kaliengo. for this one. Hamish Carter. David Weir. They got a silver in 2014 and a bronze four years ago. Another medal, definitely oh, possible. England! Team England attempting to become the first team to win three goals in a row. But they're going to be doing it without three time. James Olympic Johnson. champion Max Whitlock. Johnny but the rest of the GB team that finished fourth in Tokyo are in Team England. Gold medal winners and on the gold course, James Hall and Courtney Tillock head up the group of fun. by Ethan Dick, Misha Kuginov, William Fu Allen, Samuel Dick, Jordan O'Connell Inns. Jordan O'Connell Inns rounds up Birmingham the New Zealand team. Let's hear it for all. So there you have England, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, Scotland and Cyprus. So just a reminder that Wales lead the team competition on a score of 236. Yeah, Craig, let's just cast our minds back to the last session and uh, what a storming competition um, Wales had there to put the pressure really on Australia and Canada if they want a medal. I mean, they're going to have to go out. They're going to go some, yeah? They certainly have. And uh, let's not forget, Scotland are well in the mix as well. And I think what was really evident from the earlier round is the team spirit that the Welsh lads had was absolutely fantastic. And yes, there were a couple of little errors here and there, but certainly good enough to give them an opportunity. If they could make history and win the first ever team medal, that would just be fantastic. 
Well, Chris, throughout the day we've talked about where's best to start. Um, Team England starting on floor. Uh, this is the true Olympic order. Yeah, it is. And uh, they're the sort of highest ranked team. So they start on this piece of apparatus. I think, um, as Craig said earlier, this uh, this is most gymnast favoured rotation. You start on floor, it gets you going. Finish on high bar, which is always exciting. The Australians there starting on rings. Um, the Cypriot gymnasts as well. Marius Yorju is one to watch. Keep an eye on him. Uh, in the all-round qualification as well. Of course, gymnasts here not just competing for their country, but also for a place in individual apparatus finals and the all-round competition. The top 18 will find themselves in that final. Two per country allowed for both the all-around and the individual apparatus finals. And the top eight scores on each apparatus will work through into those individual apparatus finals. Daniel Lee, uh, he leads the all-around qualification. Gymnast from Jersey. We'll open up the team competition for England. Just a reminder, it's the top three scores from each country that will count. No doubt England will put up four gymnasts. Pick the top three. It'll be James, Jake, and Gianni. Maybe Joe Fraser as well. We'll have to see how his foot is. But Joe has um, a lot of injury, but we'll talk about that shortly. Starting for England, James Hall. Well, there's no better gymnast to lead your team out. Bags of experience. Huge opening tumble, the handspring into the double fight front somersault. Big second tumble. Double somersault with the double twist. Oh, good combination there. Another double twist into the straight front full twist. Lovely control. Again, loads of time in the two and a half twist. The more the somersaults, the more the twist, the higher the difficulty. And this is what will set the England team apart from the rest of this field, is the level of difficulty these lads have got in the armory. Final shrug of the shoulders. Come on, stand it up, James. Triple twist. Good, solid start. Well, They're on the way. That will take the pressure off the lads to follow when you post a big score like that. What a set left. What a start for England. You can see Team England at the bottom of the stairs. They're all there, the welcoming committee. Mitchell Morgans. First up on the rinks for Australia. A big piece for them to start on. Maybe a good one to get out the way, but they will be finishing on pommel horse. Beautiful strength there. Shoulders well down in line with the hands. Super swinging. And again, controlling the rings beautifully. Lovely extension through the legs, the feet, but he let that fall over the top, just not flattening the back out completely in the handstand position. And now he's struggling a little bit. Oh, and he's missed that as well. You have to show swing to handstand backwards and forwards. Recovered well with the dismount, but he racked up deductions during that team, <laughs> during that routine, I should say. Well, maybe the nerves just got the better in there, Christine. He fell out the handstand in the forward long swing and managed to recover, but then lost it again on the backward long swing and did well to recover. Good dismount, but luckily in this format, it's four routines and it's the best three scores to count. 
lucky for him, unlucky for the three that follow. <laughs> <laughs> well, a bit more pressure. Yeah. And the lads on floor from England, they're only going three up, so they all count. Yes, injuries in the team have meant that Joe Fraser is not competing on all six pieces of apparatus, and he was in with a real shout for the all-round title. But watch out for James Hall with a score of 13.25. He'll be one to watch for the all-around title. Well, Jake Jarman now for Team England. Just 20 years old, but he's the British floor champion. Routine number two was reserved for the Olympics. And look at that. Double straight somersault with two twists. And a triple twisting double tuck. So much virtuosity, so much power in this tumbling. He can twist and know exactly where he is. Got that uncanny awareness. He's always had great flair, great tumbling. He's had to learn to control the landings. Stylish gymnast. Oh, and he cut that just a tiny bit short from full into two and a half. Easy triple twist to finish, almost three and a half. He'll be very happy with that performance. Absolutely superb from Jake Jarman. The highest score we've seen on floor today is 13.75. That's from Eamon Montgomery, Northern Ireland. Um, but what, what a team performance. You know, you think, how do you follow James Hall? And, well, that's the answer. That was huge on the difficulty. This gymnast is so exciting to watch. Unbelievable spatial awareness. And by that, we mean when the gymnast is in the air, spinning and twisting, they know exactly where they are. I mean, this young man is just phenomenal to watch. 10.65 for Mitchell Morgans. Not the start he wanted. So, a big ask then. For Clay Mason Stevens. Yeah. He'll be calling on all of his experience here. Was third in the all around in the uh, Oceana Championships earlier this year. So they're relying on the 25 year old here. Well, it looks built for this piece of apparatus. Big shoulders, straight there, back up rise, into the crucifix, into the back plunge. Not the most difficult strength to strength combination. And he'll need to swing, that's good. Double tuck, double pike, into the back up rise. Ease in the crucifix. Needs to swing to handstand. Gymnast must keep the elbows and the arms off the straps. Good control. Swinging to handstand. One of the requirements. Needs a good dismount. Full twisting, double back. Certainly improvement on the first performer. Just what Australia need. Exactly, just settling the team down. There's a long way to go in this team final. Six pieces in all. Floor, pommels, rings, vault, P-bars, high bar. 13.75, he matches the highest score of the day, but look at the difficulty, 6.3. Which means he can go a lot higher than that. Gianni Regini Moran now for England. Second, the British Championships behind Jake. Well, another powerhouse of floor work for England. Again, lots of difficulty. Beautiful control there. Two and a half to a straight front into the one and a half. And make the double twist look so easy. 
down to the floor. Showing his flexibility in the splits. And lift a handstand. That's a requirement, something which is non-acrobatic. Oh, he did well. He just pop out the floor in the double front. Two and a half twist. Final tumble. Is it going to be three for three for England? And it is. What a routine. Absolutely magnificent. Team England having to go three for three. They don't have the option of using Joe Fraser. But uh, what a three. What a three, Chris. And that, for me, was the classiest performance. Massive difficulty, but so controlled. This was the only little error. A hop and big toe out. But even if that's a point one, that's all it'll be. Forgive him that. Absolutely. He was really impressive there. So across to follow horse and Canada. That's Kenji to men. He's just 20 years old. Good physique for Pommel Horse. Good style. It's a little untidy on the first couple of elements, but this is much better. Travelling well, just split the legs. But he's building the difficulty all the time. He travels along and round. The difficulty builds. And he's got lovely speed. Zips through this routine. Has to convert this nicely into the dismount. He did. A little bit bent-legged on the end there, but very clean. Elegant work, other than that little error at the end. Nice routine, that, Christine. Well constructed, lots of difficulty as well. As you say, just a little bit laboured towards the end, but uh, he had good extension. You can see here the angle. You push your hips at the front to extend them above the pommel horse. And uh, up into the handstand, a little brush on the apparatus. Could be either a point three or a point five deduction. One thing's for sure, the Welsh boys will be watching closely. Well, as a team, Wales scored 37.55 on Pommel Horse. They scored 40.25 on floor. Uh, Gianni scores 13.85, which puts England 40.85. So England ahead of Wales. Wales actually started across on Pommel Horse, so after the first rotation, um, England are just ahead of Wales. So we'll be going rotation for rotation. Claire Mason Stevens, 12.85. Yeah, so that Pommel score of 37.55 is what Canada are hoping to beat here. They're currently on 22. There's another score coming in, but they're on 22.65. Sometimes get a bit of an unrealistic feel for the competition. If one competition, you know, they've started on the vault, which is a high scoring piece, and you start on, let's say, pommels or high bar, which tends to be a bit low, and we, we get a real sense of the competition as we're going through. Yeah. So don't uh, be misleaded to think they're not doing as well as they are. Well, Canada on 35.95, hoping. 13.3. Jason Rampasad next for Canada. Well, he's placed in a World Cup event on this piece of apparatus. That's a very difficult skill around the one pommel handle. Come on, needs to keep the concentration. That's nice travel along. They've got some weird and wonderful names. That's called the Woo. Come on, he's keep the momentum back down. Having to separate the legs a little bit, but he's staying on. Come on, 
Forward travel down the horse. And again backwards. Just got to keep the concentration. Up into the dismount with the pirouette. Oh, and he just whips that turn in. Good performance for Canada. They're trying to up the score from 35.95, which they have for their top three gymnasts so far, and close the gap between them and Wales. Wales, at the moment, are just over three marks ahead of them on Pommel Horse. So another nice, stylish performance on the Pommel Horse from Team Canada. Bit of a deduction for the late turn in the dismount. Yeah, I was just looking at that in the slow-mo, Chris. Jesse Moore. This is what happened a little bit earlier on for Australia on rings. Tell you, on rings, um, Will scored 39.15. This is strong work. Smooth in those front somersaults and good strength element there. Just a little tiny bit of swing on those rings, but controlling the back well in the handstand. And again from the forward long swing. And the back long swing. It's very difficult to swing like that and stop at the top. Oh, double twisting, double tuck. Very nicely performed. It'll be happy with that routine. Yeah, I mean, that's going to put Australia on a score of 36.9. Still well behind Wales after what they did on rings. Some good work in this routine. There you can see a great angle of the straddle top planche. Gymnast must swing to strength, and it's a good score. Jesse Moore, 13.4 on the rings. How's that do for him, Matt? Yeah, good. Very good. Puts him top, actually. 13.4 ahead of Dan Lee from Jersey. 13.25 for Rampasad. But as predicted, Wales are just ahead and they've got a cushion. So is Christine, and she <laughs> sat on it. <laughs> just thinking that actually Canada are doing exactly the same rotation as Wales, aren't they? So it is a complete like-for-like yes. -like performance there. What I'm trying to do is compare the scores that Wales yeah. got on those pieces of apparatus so that we yes. get a really clear idea of how yeah. they're going pound for pound. And England ahead of floor. Ethan Dick for New Zealand. Oh, good opening tumble. Two somersaults linked. Oh, did well there. That's the double Arabian somersault. Gymnasts have to perform a double somersault on the floor now. Oh, and just a little bit soft there on the landing. I think the floor took him a little bit by surprise. Strength position. The Russian lever into box splits. Don't try that at home. Good control in the handstand. Relatively safe, straight back somersault, but well controlled. Skips into the double twist. One big lunge into the corner. Time to finish. Stands up, triple twist. Not a bad routine, not the most difficult we see, but a clean sheet. Well, this is... Ethan Dick was fifth at the Commonwealths on, um, on floor, 22 years old. It's back in 2018. Lovely technique on that lift to hand stand.
for a full twisting dismount. Very difficult. You have to really block, not rotate too much. Well, Scotland's bid for a team medal starts here with Cameron Lynn. Just 19 years old. Well, opens well. Got a good rhythm. It's a little bit piked on the forward swing. He looks well in control. Good fast hands. Very good body tension throughout the exercise. Lifts well. Well, that was a good start for Scotland. Perfect start for Cameron Lynn and for Scotland. Really didn't put a foot wrong there or even a hand wrong. Yeah, they're going to be chasing down wheels. It's going to be very, very interesting as we get to the latter stages of this team competition when you think of wheels and put that into perspective of their scores. What colour will the medals be for the countries? We're witnessing here. Kyle Kudinov for New Zealand. Lots of experience, big opening tumble. Straight front into the double front somersault by linking those skills. It's a tenth of bonus, as well as the difficulty. The whip somersault into the two and a half twist. Quite a popular skill. The wide arm lift to handstand. Got to get the head as close to the floor as possible. And then roll out into the straddle lever. Lift to handstand. Well controlled there. One and a half twist into the straight front somersault with full. Final tumble. Double twist. Great work from the 30 year old from New Zealand. I think he might be 31, Craig. You've done him out of a year there, I think. Well, he's looking good today. <laughs> Must be the jet lag took a year off him. It gets to the, gets to the point, doesn't it, in the gymnast career where you start celebrating how old you are and what you can still do. Cameron Lynn scores 13. Great start for Scotland. And Frank Baines out of retirement for the Commonwealth Games here. Just finishing his qualifications as a physiotherapist. Always a stylish gymnast. Just a little flicker through those legs. Well, this is strong. Keep it going, Frank. Little bit untidy in places, but he did the job. He's Went still through. got it, hasn't he? He's still got it. Still got that style. Good work, Frank. Very, very impressive stuff. 27 years old now, is fourth in the all-round at the Commonwealth Games in 2018. He's doing his bit here for Team Scotland. Kuganov, 12.75 for New Zealand. William. Fu Allen, next to go for New Zealand. A young team, this inexperienced team. Oh, big opening tumble, and again. Powerful on this piece of apparatus. Two and a half twist.
Good control. A bit wide in the feet of the landing. Judges looking for the feet nailed together. And if they think that the feet are shoulder width, they could take three tenths. So you've really got to snap the heels together as soon as you land. And in a competition like this, every tenth matters. One final puff of the cheeks. Stands into the triple twist, that slight adjustment. Tell you what, Matt, the guys from New Zealand are putting together some good floor routines. Yeah, we were saying they're slightly inexperienced, but sometimes that helps, Chris. Sometimes it does, and they're very stylish performers, all of them. 12.65 for Frank Baines on Pommel Horse. They'll be putting two more gymnasts up and then picking the best three. Add them together for the team total on Pommel Horse. Pelicoris and on rings now. To join us for this men's team final. England and Scotland. Home nations in this team final here. Wales are leading the team final after the last session, but there's a lot of gymnastics still left to go. And this is Cyprus on the rings. Very strong, powerful gymnast. These strength elements have to be held. He's been performing well. Lovely control at the top of the swing. Gymnast has to swing up to handstand and control it. Now is his dismount, double straight with full twist. That was a very successful routine for Cyprus. Well, Cyprus have some very strong gymnasts indeed. Just to give you an idea of how this team final works, uh, each country puts up four gymnasts and the top three scores count. But as well as it being a team final, it's also a qualification competition for the individual finals. So the top 18 gymnasts will go through to the all-around final, and the top eight, the individual apparatus final. 12.35, Fu Allen from New Zealand. He was the third gymnast to go for New Zealand. So Samuel Dick next to go. He's just 20 years old. Well, did well to control the power. Teammates have put together some good routines before, so it just takes the pressure off a little bit. That's a big tumble. One step outside the floor, that's a point one deduction. Such a springy gymnast, zipping around the floor. Gymnasts can do up to seven tumbles across and down the side of the floor to build the difficulty. Ten elements added together, which will give the difficulty score. And then the judges will pick up the execution points from ten. Very well controlled. Double twist. Teammates cheering him on. It's been a good routine so far. Double Arabian with a half out. Good, solid routine. A strong finish from New Zealand. Samuel's brother, Ethan, opened up New Zealand's bid on floor. Very proud family indeed, back in New Zealand watching the Commonwealth Games. Villacore scores 14.4 for Cyprus. 8-8 eight, eight for execution. Yes, he says, I'm happy with that. <laughs> Very impressive stuff. to go. A little flair to start with. Just a bit soft around the knees. He's getting his rhythm now, building his difficulty by... Oh, working on one handle and he let the legs come apart, but he fought well, kept it going, kept the speed. 
And he's certainly recovered well. Building the difficulty, building into the dismount. Well, another very good routine for Scotland. Well, Wales scored 37.55 on Tommel Horse. So it's going to be fascinating to see what Scotland have scored when the top three scores are added together. He did well there, Christine, not to fall from the apparatus. That just shows you the grit and determination. Competing out in America. 12.85 for Hamish Carter, so he ups Scotland's score from what Pavel scored earlier on, 38.5 for Wales on Pommel Horse. So they, sorry, for Scotland on Pommel Horse, so they go ahead of Wales. 12.5 for Samuel Dick. And on we go then to the second rotation. In Subdivision 3, these are the final gymnasts to compete in the team final and the qualification as well. There's confirmation that England are ahead of Cyprus and Wales currently in third, Canada in fourth with Scotland in fifth. But all these gymnasts are starting, these teams are starting on different pieces of apparatus. Some are higher scoring than others, so don't be fooled by what you see in there. Scotland scored more than Wales did on Pommel Horse, and that's what's important. Surprise, actually, Matt, Australia there. They're way down in seventh, had a bit of a shaky start. Well, we wondered, didn't we, Chris, if it could be England, Scotland, Wales sharing the medal podium. And um, it's looking very, very good for Wales at this stage. Yeah, uh, Australia were definitely shaky. Maybe it was a poor apparatus for them. Their very first gymnast up really caved in a little bit under the pressure. But Canada showed some good, strong work. So uh, I think there's everything to fight for for everybody. Well, New Zealand will move to Pommel Horse, along with England. Uh, rings then will... Um, be the home for Scotland and Canada for the next rotation. And then uh, Cyprus and Australia will go over to vault. Now, you may see some vaulters doing two vaults. That's because they're hoping to get into that vault final. So, like I say, as well as it being a, a team final, it's also entry into all of the individual gymnastic finals that are to come later on in the Games. But, yeah, Wales uh, this afternoon were absolutely outstanding. Bryn Bevan was a standout for me. But, yeah, I've just seen the gymnasts warming up here. This is not, uh, this is not the competition. <laughs> Don't be fooled by the warm-up. That's right, Matt. Gymnasts, they get three minutes, which basically is one touch of the apparatus. And you'll find if the gymnast is first up, then they will go up to the warm-up the first and have a little little warm-up, not too much. They need to get themselves off, prepare, get themselves psyched up, get the breath back for their first performance. The guys from Cyprus on rings posted really good scores. And uh, this young man here, he's sort of led the charge for Cyprus over recent years. Absolutely. Marius is now 24. Um, he's one of the, the two um, brothers in this team, um, as well as the uh, New Zealand brothers as well. I was pretty impressed with Scotland, that uh, pommel horse start. They were very strong. Well, Cameron Lynn opened for Scotland on pommel horse. He's doing the same here on rings. He's just 19 years old and a piece of apparatus for the older gymnasts who've had the chance to really develop that strength. Well, straight into the swinging elements. Double pike, somersault, double tuck, somersault. He has to swing to strength as one of the requirements. We've not seen that yet. He also has to swing into a handstand position. There he goes forward. Could be stretching the toes a little bit there, a little bit more extension. Backward long swing. 
good dismount. Lacking a little bit in strength there, Matt, as you picked up. Just needs a bit more age to get that maturity. But uh, one down and three more to go. Well, Wales' score on rings was 39.15, so that's the score that Scotland are looking to beat. This Chari for Cyprus thundering down the runway. Oh, and a lovely vault. Powers up from the handspring into the front somersault with one and a half twist. Sometimes the gymnasts land with the chest very low, but that was a very good landing. There you can see blocks right at the front of the vaulting table. That's the bit that you almost push back to where you're coming from. That'll transition you up into the air, gives you time to block in. One and a half twist and just stepping out the zone there. That's a point one. So 4.8 on difficulty. The most he could score would be 14.8, losing point one. Uh, but a good opening vault for Cyprus. 13.7, and this an event, a really good opportunity to build your score. You can see there the execution of nine. So all the teams that have competed on vault, you'll see them moving up, up the rankings. Uh, this will be the piece that Scotland will move on to after rings. So it should really sort out the standings after that. But 4.8 difficulty for Marius Georgiou. Another good piece of apparatus. Oh, well done, the Yushchenko with the double twist. Plenty of height and flight on that. No problems whatsoever. Clean as you like for the bronze medalist in the all-around competition from the last Commonwealth Games. He's technically very sound. Look, blocks, lifts, wraps, comes out to make the landing. I mean, good luck to the judges for taking off there. 13 scored for Cameron Lynn. What a great score from a 19-year-old on rings. So Hamish Carter next up. He was sixth in the all-round at the Commonwealth Games in 2018. He's now 23. Did well on Pomelos. As he got to offer on rings. And uh, now spends a lot of the year in America at university on a gymnastics scholarship, so he's training all the time. That was a well-held handstand. Swings beautifully up, kills the swing. There again. Those are the very tricky bits. Needs to show a bit of strength now as well. He doesn't really oh. show so much strength, but what he did do was very good, and that was a lovely double-twisting, double-back dismount. A very, very good bid there from Hamish Carter, and actually because he performs his gymnastics out in America, uh, there's a lot of lot of crowds often, and he'll, he'll relish this opportunity because the atmosphere in here is really quite something for these gymnasts. It is, and very much like he would be used to in the States. Yeah. 14.15 for Marius Georgiou. It's a big score for Cyprus. They could be the surprise package, Cyprus. Kyle Kudinov now for New Zealand. Cross on Pommel Horse. Second of the New Zealanders onto this piece of apparatus. Showing good control there in the first handstand. But down to work there on the Pommel Horse forward travel needs to keep driving the heels keep the momentum going almost brushes the top of the pommel horse it's a little bit more extension and they're having to use strength so it'll be a big deduction on the dismount but he's through but not without errors well he needed a good score there 11.2 was Fu Allen's score beforehand his compatriot and he posted Going back. Well, I think he's decided he won't get the dismount. So he's going to repeat the dismount because that is one of the requirements. So we'll see now the idea is he will travel to the end, up into the handstand. That's how he should have done it the first time. 
but New Zealand carry a fall. Yeah, not so costly to have a fall in the team when you've got four up and three to count. At the Worlds and Olympics, it's usually three up and three to count, and that is where the pressure really, really builds. But that's the situation that England find themselves in on many of these pieces of apparatus because Joe Fraser, who we were all expecting to do six pieces of apparatus, has a foot injury, and he's only doing four pieces here. He's absolutely heartbroken. Obviously, this is uh, he was born and raised these parts in Birmingham, his primary school just round the corner. Another beautiful twisting Yushchenko, lovely height. And Jonas there from Cyprus, again with a, quite a high difficulty. He, I'm not quite sure that he was right the way round. Nice and high, whips that second twist in. Yes, I think they will count that, but it wasn't quite clean enough to open out before he landed. Well, they gave him 13.8, a great score for Cyprus. As you say, Chris, Cyprus, the ones to watch. Well, they've had two good pieces of apparatus. Volt is a good scoring piece for all the gymnasts generally. Yeah, Scotland will be pleased to pour some Volt scores after rings. Hamish Carter, I can tell you, has scored 12.9 for rings. There's confirmation of Hamish's score. It's 12.9, 4.3 on the difficulty, 8.6 on the execution. So there's no maximum as far as difficulty is concerned for these gymnasts' routines. They can go really as difficult as they want, but obviously that comes at the cost of how well you can execute it. Ethan Dick. For New Zealand on pommels. Well, pressure's on slightly from the previous gymnast. He started well. Just needs to keep the tension in the legs. Any flexion and separation. He's got the difficulty work. That's the forward travel. You'll see a lot of that during this games. I'll keep you up to speed with the names. That's the Magyar. Oh, good control up into the handstand. No hesitation. Much better. And much needed for New Zealand. They'll put one more gymnast up. I would imagine Jordan O'Connell Inns will have a go next, and then they'll choose Ooh. the top three of the four gymnasts for their team total. That was a much more confident performance. Kudinov, 11.5 for Pommels. He had that fall. Pavel Karnajenko next for Scotland. Follows a 13.2 from Frank Baines. Beautiful body shape in that strength element, holding the body horizontal to the floor. And another very difficult strength move. When they're linked like that, you get your big bonuses. He can swing as well. Needs to keep the elbow straight, lock into the handstand. Super technique on the swing. Elbow straight. Oh, just had to fight a little bit to hold it there. Double oh. twisting, double back. Really very efficient indeed. He's developing into a fine ring gymnast. What about that? He was second at the British Championships on this piece of apparatus, and Scotland needed that. They did indeed. He's had a bit of an ankle injury. So obviously put extra time in on rings. 13-4 for Pommels and Ethan Dick. Yeah, Jordan or Colin Inns. 
next to go for New Zealand. He'll be the last gymnast up, the fourth one. And then Team England will start on pommels. See James Hall there just warming up. Straight into the single leg work. Oh, did well there. That skill's all about keeping your balance. Settles into the rest of the routine. Come on, come on. You've got to push those hips out. Keep the circle as flat as possible. As soon as you start piking at the hips, you can sometimes throw the circle off, but he's doing well. Little bit scrappy in the legs, but he's got through. Another routine for New Zealand. There he goes. A <laughs> sigh of relief. <laughs> There's the Commonwealth spirit. <laughs> Everybody looks mighty relieved. Yes, I'm here. I did my best and I got through it. He's got good style, though. He feels this apparatus very well. Well, he's looking to up it from 70.8. Malajenko, 14.2. It's huge for Scotland. Actually, the uh, second highest ring score of the day. He said it was much needed. I wonder what Wales will be thinking about that. They'll be sitting watching this competition on the edge of their seats. Well, they probably won't have any nails left as well by the end of the competition. Well, one thing's for sure, they're going to be keeping a very close eye on Cyprus. So we're almost halfway through here. We're just having a bit of a warm up for the other gymnasts. Basically, each rotation is split in half with the country. So um, England going around with New Zealand. So England have the chance of a little warm up now. Uh, Scotland going around with Canada. So Canada will be warming up on rings. And then um, Cypriots over on vault are teamed with Australia. And they get a chance to uh, warm up as well. So this is just the uh, Australian vaulters getting a feel for the apparatus. 25 metre run up, then they hit the table and get that block to try and send them up into the rafters. Well, this gymnast one to watch, very powerful. He'll be going for uh, two volts, he'll be aiming for a vault final. Saw him the other day in the podium session. Very exciting to watch, you can see Joe Fraser there on the pommel horse, one of his David piece of apparatus. They're hoping for a pommel horse final. Bitterly disappointed not being able to challenge for the all around. So it'd be hungry to win as many medals as he can in the apparatus finals. And well, Clay Mason Stevens will be the first of the Australian vaulters. It's, um, if you're interested, it's 1.35 metres, uh, that platform on the floor and um, it's evolved hasn't it the, the vault when you think from the early days Chris of the uh, of the vaulting horse or even the box that yeah maybe... I was gonna say it was the box <laughs> and then uh, a vaulting horse and this has really developed vaulting in a long way because it's sprung on the top it's like a launch pad well, third in the Oceana games clear Mason Stevens on vault Super double twist. Now that probably is the cleanest we've seen. The uh, the flip on allows you to really power up into the air. Oh, yeah, fine example. 4.8 difficulty. So by no means an easy vault. Well, powerful young man. Best we've seen, I think. England's James Hall now. Pommel horse. Second piece of apparatus for England. Well, a controlled start there and good control on that very difficult skill on the one pommel. And again, building the circles.
Can you turn around there? Stockley skills. Needs to keep pushing down. That's good work. Keep those feet together. This is difficult work. The forward travel. Come on, James. Drive the heels. This is good. Just needs control up into the handstand for a wet. Well, that was a great routine. World class difficulty. World class execution. James Hall is looking good. Jess Seymour. Australia on vault. Oh, and not quite such a clean vault. It was lovely in the air, lovely straight body in the twist, but he was offline. He used the uh, turn on. I think, Craig, it was off right from the top, don't you? Yeah, so that'll be a point three automatically. So, instead of going from 14.8, 14.5, you can see there. One in, one out, but when you jump both feet over the line, you'll pick up a point three. It was lovely and tight in the air. Lovely twist. Claire Mason Stevens, 14.25. It was a huge score. 9.45 on the execution, so hardly any deductions. And a 13.55 for Jesse. See the point three there. Similar vault. Well, a 5-6 on the difficulty board. So watch this one. James Bacoetti. He's revved up and ready to go. Brace yourselves for vault fireworks. Oh, and that was a triple twist. Very difficult to do off the vault, and he made it look simple. Bit of a specialist on this piece of apparatus. The first triple twist we've seen so far in the competition. Jake Jarman, second at the British, and Pomelos. And that's among very high caliber company as well. Oh, beautiful single leg separation there. No hesitation in the handstand. You'll notice that the better gymnasts on these pieces of apparatus have a certain pace around the, the speed of the circle, almost hover above the apparatus. Go on, you've got to keep pushing. A little bit of leg separation, but kept the momentum. Such a zippy character. Come on. Just needs a handstand, no problems at all. Two for two for England. Very strong, this. Zipped up in the handstand there, he almost flicked it up. Absolutely superb. What a competition Jake's having. And showing a lot more maturity than we've seen before from him. Felix Bolchi. the lines of this gymnast well you want a straight line and he's certainly shown that on both those strength elements shoulders down in line with the rings body straight in the air holding it horizontal to the floor control in the handstand phase and again these legs are locked together Even in the somersaults, nothing's untidy. Hey. 
Starts the swing for the dismount. Double twisting, double bag. That was really very, very clean work. We're going to see a lot more from Felix at these Commonwealth Games, that's for sure. Yeah, what an excitable young man. Big talent. Yeah. Love the construction of that routine, Matt. Combined with the strength and the swing. Classy work. 13-8 for Bommel Horse. The James Hall. Come on, son. What a start for England. You're the man for the job. Let's go. Fourteen point six. Bakoetti. Thirteen one for Jake Jarman. It's our first chance to see local lad Joe Fraser. Third at the Euros last year and the current British champion on this piece. Well, he can work this piece of apparatus really well. Straight up to handstand without hesitation. That's what the judges are looking for. And this is very difficult work between the pommel handles. Just watch how straight the legs are. Clenching the feet together. Really difficult work. No separation there. Come on, Joe. This is fantastic. Travelling back down the pommel. That's the woo travel. Winds up into the handstand. That is the best pommel routine we've seen in this rotation. It was absolutely superb. It was packed with difficulty. Surely he's going to get himself into the pommel final with that one. And what kind of a challenge can he offer to Rhys McLennan from Northern Ireland, who leads the pommel horse qualification with 14.35. 14.4 for Felix Dolce. That's the biggest ring score of the day. 13.1 for Jake Jarman for England. Chris Kaji next for Canada on rings. Just a reminder, Will scored 39.15 on rings. And another very, very powerful, strong gymnast. Able to hold his body completely straight, the power in his shoulders. Lock that out, just about does. Oh, and from the front somersault immediately into the crucifix. And again, all his strength elements beautifully held. Oh, but just a bit soft in the back in that handstand shape. Little deductions there for the judges. Double straight with full twist. Some fabulous work in that routine. And what a good follow-up to Felix Dolce's score of 14-4. 14.65, ahead of Reese McLenaghan at the Pommel Horse qualification final. Yes! What a score for England! And what a confidence boost for him. After such disappointment that he can't do the six pieces and get into that all-around competition. Gianni Regini Moran next to go. The fourth gymnast up for England, so the opportunity to pick the top three here. Well, they can just relax a little bit. We've got three scores in the bag so far. Again, swinging this piece of apparatus so well. Real confidence about this young man now. Well done, a difficult travel down the pommel. Forwards and backwards. Come on, up into the handstand, no hesitation. Well, a 
that might just raise it a few more tents. <laughs> Fantastic! England are flying. Well done, England. They've had their injury worries coming into this, but they're showing their heart and their complete mastery here. Yeah, how far over 250 could they go? But Canada have been impressive on this apparatus. 14-1 well, for Chris Kaji. Mathis, Mathis Jalbert next to go. Very stylish. But a young gymnast and all and not quite such strong body tension. You can see his back's a little bit soft. He's fighting to hold those handstands. The swinging elements a little bit more within his scope. And this is, you can see, it's a big fight. Oh, nice dismount though, one and a half twist in the double tuck. 22 years old. Oh, big routine for a little lad. Like you say, Christine just struggled a little bit to lock out on the handstand. This is such a difficult piece of apparatus because the rings move independently from the frame at the top. And you require such upper body strength. But swang well in the multiple somersaults and a good dismount to finish, but England are on song. Gianni scores 13.15 for Pommelhorst. Big scores for Team England, who lead this competition. After the two rotations. Scotland still yet to vault. That's their next piece. So prepare to see things leveled out just a little bit with the standings. So, yes, Team England move across to rings. Courtney Tillock will get involved with this one. England and New Zealand over on rings. Um, Canada and Scotland will be vaulting next. And then the Aus Australians and the Cypriot gymnasts will be on T-bars. Canada will vault first, so Scotland will just take a seat for now. And the Australians are chalking up the P-bars, so that will be the first team to go there, and um, England will be first up on rings in their group. So we think Joe's going to do rings we think james is going to do rings we think courtney's going to do rings um jake jarman may well swing the rings as well well so far england are topping the apparatus pommels they'll probably be leading on rings after this rotation courtney tullock is an absolute beast on this piece of apparatus again a little bit of Precautionary decisions, I think, there just landed a bit short on floor on the podium the other day, and he'd be gutted to pull out the floor and vault, but he needs to protect himself for the team for the upcoming European Championship, which is straight off the back of these Commonwealth Games. Be interesting to see what Dismount he chooses to do, actually, Courtney. Well, his routine's that good. Matt, he could probably do a straight back and still be I mean. post the top score. Yeah, that's what I mean. It, 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 there's no point in risking it with, um, you know, one of the options he's got of his twist and dismount. Well, we've often seen him perform such a brilliant routine and then 
flounder at the, at the dismount because he's got such a big dismount, can do a double straight with double twist. And we've all said, why does he bother putting in such a massive dismount if he could just play it a bit safer and get the difficulty from the routine? So I think it's Gianni that is not working rings. Looking at uh, the start list there and they, the, the team, the England camp had said that Gianni wouldn't be working rings. Yep, so James will be up first. And Joe will go second, and then Courtney third with Jake Jarman at fourth. Those are the gymnasts on parallel bars. And Canada kick off over on vault. Mathis Chalbert. Good full twisting. Straight, Sukahara. 19 years old, just recently up into the senior ranks. So I'm guessing this gymnast has replaced Rene Kunoye, who was out with injury. So a real opportunity to make the most of his Commonwealth Games debut. While England are stretching ahead of the rest of the Commonwealth. And no doubt that will continue to be the case after rings. James Hall will start. Interesting to see what form he's in with rings for the all-round bid as well, Craig. Yeah, absolutely. With Joe Fraser out of the all-round, certainly. This guy's my favourite. He's a great all-round gymnast. He's built for doing each piece of apparatus. He's strong, he can swing. He's got a beautiful shape and line in the handstand. Look at that, locking out the rings. A lot of gymnasts, when they lift the handstand, if they're a little bit weak, I don't want to say that disrespectfully, but they tend to put their elbows and arms on the cables, but not James. Solid in the handstand. He's a big dismount as well. No problem at all. Very good, very solid, very dependable. That's James Hall in a nutshell. Yep, James for... Oh, and there's the British girls team in the audience <laughs> waving to us, supporting the men tonight. Got a job to do tomorrow. You'll be on the phone shortly, Chris, and get to bed. Jabert, <laughs> <laughs> score of 13 on vault. A welcome addition to the team. next for Canada. Another of the Canadian gymnasts that's impressed on rings, and quite often the good rings workers are also good vaulters because they've got that power through the shoulders. Yeah. Oh, and he certainly was. Lovely style. Look at the length of that vault. He's only quite a, a small gymnast, but he lifted off that platform. Yeah, you're right, Christine. Generally, the powerful ring workers are very good on the vault as well, and probably the longest vault that we've seen so far, and that's what the judges are looking for, height and distance from the platform. Well, a super middle part to their, to their competition. Bit of a shaky start, but starting to put that to bed now. Jesse Moore opens up for Australia on parallel bars. He got a silver at the Oceana Games just earlier this year on this piece of apparatus. Well, unusual start, facing into the bars. A little bit of originality. Good front somersault transitions well into handstand, just a little adjustment. Smooth there in the full pirouette around one arm. Nice transition to the end of the bars. He'll pirouette back to the centre now. A little bit of hesitation into the handstand there. The judges want to see that catch and go straight into the handstand. It's been a big solid routine with a big dismount, the double front somersault. Good routine there, Team Australia. 
Well, in the past, Australia have got a gold. They've got three silvers and three bronze in the team final. Thirteen seven for James Hall. <laughs> very good. Very, very good indeed. Sixth highest ring score of the day. Second piece for Joe today. Outstanding on Pommel Horse. As you've said, Matt's so disappointed on not being able to work all around. He'll really want to do his bit for the team. Become a very strong gymnast. Very technical. Look at that straight line, the feet high. And a lovely straight line, feet to hands. Swings back to that position. And again, now, what's he going to do for a dismount? We know he's had to pull out of floor and vault. Oh! But that doesn't mean he's not going to give his all on a big dismount. Double twisting, double tuck. Well done, Joe. Claudia Fragapani liked it. <laughs> well, he could well be in the rings final as well, Joe. Well, I think he will with that performance. What an accomplished routine that was. 14.35 for Chris Kaji. Jesse Moore, 13.9 for parallel bars. Come on, Pat, let's go. Seems to have a, like a haircut that's in homage of Jason Donovan. Of course, the uh, last episode of Neighbours has gone out today, so maybe in homage of that. I wonder why you were crying this morning into your cornflakes, Matt. <laughs> Anyhow, won't be on the minds of these gymnasts. That's for certain. Posted a good score at the start. That's good work. Going from the upper arm, you need such strength. And it lifts the difficulty by a tenth. So well worth the bonus. This gymnast got huge shoulders and works the bars well. Big dismount. Yeah, Australia working well yeah. on the fellow bars. Back in the game now, Australia and Canada. This is why we thought they'd be such a challenge for Wales. Joe Fraser has the highest ring score of the day. It's 14.45. Oh, yeah. See you in the rings final, Joe. Well, he's done two routines for the team and he's posted the top score. On both pieces. Can't do any better than that. But how long will it be the top score on rings? Because stand by, here comes Courtney Tullock. Commonwealth champion, silver at the Europeans, current British champion as well. Looking to push England even further ahead of the rest of the Commonwealth. Well, this is one opportunity for an individual medal, and look at the strength on this young man. Absolutely phenomenal. Level with the rings, and again, look at that. The Maltese position. Now, can he swing? Yes, he can. Double pike front somersault, whips up to handstand with ease. It's like he's and on hydraulics, isn't it? Absolute ease. And it's so difficult to explain to the viewer just what strength is involved in a routine like this. Up into the handstand. Sticks to dismount. This will be the highest score of the day. And a little adjustment. That's it. What a routine. Courtney Tullock. He loves it. And we love it too. Courtney, you're an absolute legend. Well done. 
Yes. See you in the rings final with that man. <laughs> well, today is all about the team doing what they can. However, this competition is all about qualifying for the individual apparatus finals as well. So there's a lot at stake here. Tyson Bull next to go for Australia on parallel bars. This a very good apparatus for him. Super pirouettes, lovely line. He hits that handstand shape. Controls the top of the swing. Whips in the front somersault and the Healy. Lovely straight arms. We haven't really seen a flicker anywhere. Toes to fingers, straight. Oh, great double pike dismount. That was a very classy routine. Well, Claire Mason Stevens was a gymnast to go just before him. Posted a steady score. Courtney Tullock, top of the tree with 14.7. It's huge. That won't be beaten. Not today, anyway. And as a man for England, it's Jake Jarman. Jake Jarman, the fourth English gymnast up onto the rings. Well, England have enough scores in the bag so far. So pressure's off Jake a little bit. But he'll still want to put in a good performance. Now plenty of height above the rings there. Wanna see the rings go slack. Not allowed to use strength in the swinging elements. It's got a lockout. No problem in the long swings. Wraps in the twist. Another good solid performance. I don't think it'd be good enough to lift the England score, but again, it's about consistency, making your mark in the team. Well, James Hall was first up with a 13.7. But talk about strength in depth. 14.05 for Tyson Bull. That's the second highest score of the day on P bars behind Bryn Bevan from Wales with a score of 14.45. Daniel Lee from Jersey still in with a shout on P bars. He's got the fifth highest score at the moment. It's the top eight. Mitchell Morgans. Or as Tyson Bull just scored over 14 there. Clawing their way back towards Wales. Another gymnast with a beautiful line. Just the slightest hesitation, but very smooth. Oh, lovely from the long swing and holding confidently on the single rail. And the Healy out into handstand. Good difficulty here. Gives himself time on the apparatus, just a little pace with one hand, but good double pike. Another very strong routine for Australia. Very strong indeed. Looking to push that score. He's the fourth up. I said earlier how they had a really shaky start, but uh, Parallel Bars has really rocketed them back into the mix. Some really difficult work on this piece of apparatus. So we're halfway through, and now we can invite seconds of gymnasts up to take their time. Well, Canada have done well as well. Jake Jarman, 13.25. So James Hall's score of 13-7 will stand. But Australia well go ahead of Wales here.
Felix Dolce having an absolute stormer of a competition. Not long out of the youth ranks. Well, we said this is one to watch. Powerful approach, wraps in, no problem. Sukahara with the two and a half twist. Such a compact, dynamic gymnast, Matt. Exciting to watch. Yeah, certainly one for the future. Fourteen point two five, huge. Good smile to match. Well done, son. Yeah, just 20 years old, Felix. He'll be in the vault final. Just waiting for Mitchell Morgan's score to come in. It's the Australian champion on peak bars, so they're hoping it's going to be big. Obviously debating something. They've all gone for the Donovan, haven't they? The hairdos. I thought that was the Kylie. <laughs> Must be good. It's 14-5. It is big. It's very, very big indeed. It's the highest parallel bar score of the day. Rockets in 0 0.05 ahead of Bryn Bevan. So England ahead of Canada, Australia have gone ahead of Wales. And then Sri Lanka, Bangladesh and India, with Scotland still yet to compete. And Cyprus as well. Yes, subdued is how you would describe the Welsh camp at the moment. Tentative. It's always very tricky. They've done their job. They've set their stall out, as it were, and they can't do anything more now. They'll be feeling pretty tired, I would think, as well. Scotland now on vault, preparing to vault themselves up the standings here. A very high-scoring piece of apparatus. Frank Baines kicks things off. It's fifth at the Commonwealth Games on vault back in 2014. What a beautiful, <laughs> flawless, double-twisting Sukahara. Fantastic stuff from Frank Baines. Scotland off to an absolute flyer on this piece. Showing every ounce of his experience and maturity. Should get into the nines for execution. As we fly over to the rings. William Fuallen for New Zealand. He's the first up on rings for them. Well, circling into the handstand, a little bit soft in the back, few wobbles, needs to control the dismount, a little bit of a low landing. Hard to see what the first part of the routine was like. What, we're going for execution? Oh, look at that! What, 9.35? Beautiful. 14.15, the score with execution and difficulty added together for Frank Baines. Hamish Carter next to go. This Hamish's second games. He's having a good competition so far. Oh, and another classy vault, big hop backwards, but he flips on, really gets a good block. Well, Scotland not holding back on the difficulty, Chris. The way the judging is going, actually, you're probably better off going for slightly less difficulty and going for a better e-score. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, judges holding the scores well from the previous rounds. Dallas Carey, Pivars to Cyprus. Well, the first look at Cyprus on the parallel bars. They've done well on the first two pieces of apparatus. Can they keep the momentum? Clean work so far, but nothing on fire with the difficulty. Lift to handstand. Into the double fight back. Bit of a short routine. Not the most difficult we see, however. Three more gymnasts to go. Absolutely. Yeah, of the four scores, you pick the best three. Here, Mish Carter, 13.8 on vault. That'll do the job. William Fu Allen, 12.35. New Zealand rings. They're just a little short on difficulty, New Zealand, aren't they, for really contesting here? Kyle Kudinov. Next to go, he got a bronze at the Oceania Championships uh, earlier this year on this piece of apparatus. The eldest of the New Zealand gymnasts here, using all that experience. It's 31. Naturally well-extended gymnast. Look at those legs locked together, the toes really pointed. Everything he does, he does really well. Lovely straight arms. But you need quite a lot of difficulty as well. That was a super dismount, really straight body with the full twist. But just a bit short of the difficulty score, I think, mm -hmm. to be fighting for medals. Well, like you said, Christina, the judges seem to be looking at the execution. It's, again, not what you do. It's the way that you do it. and. Uh, that's what gets results. Yeah, you've got to squeeze the legs. Look, you could great position there. Extended legs, pointed toes. You see how he's just got his elbows on the straps. So that picks up a tenth deduction. Winds up, full twist in the dismount in the straight position. Just to remind it, uh, Will scored 39.15 four rings. Carlos Carey, 12.75 for P-Bars. Their bid for a medal continues now. Ilias Georgiou. Cleanly up, cleanly on. Nice lines for this piece. Yep, Matt, solid in the handstand. A little bit of flicker of the legs there. But that's a difficult skill. Under some assault with the turn. That's much better. A little bit of a hesitation there, that skill, the tipel, you'll see that quite a lot. Oh, that was much better, the transition into the middle. Known as the Bavzar. Double pipe back, better routine for Cyprus. A few little wobbles here and there. Took a little bit of a clapper there on landing. Thirteen one five for Kudinov on rings for New Zealand. Ethan Dick now for New Zealand over on rings. brother will follow him. Great style again. Now we need to see these difficult strength holds. Lovely handstand line. Excellent swinging. Full twisting double back, but Again, it was short of the real power strength elements in combination. Yeah, it could swing the rings very well, but 
As you pointed out, Christine, there, lacking a little bit in the strength part of the routine. And rings is a real balance between the strength and the swing. David Weir next to go on vault for Scotland. 5.2 on the difficulty. Oh, what a shame, what a shame. He went for it, Chris, he didn't hold back. He didn't, but uh, he just didn't have quite enough height and rotation. He obviously, it's, it's a more difficult vault, it's out of 5.2. He flips on, lovely block actually, but just runs out of uh, height and rotation and has to sit it out. Just 12.95 for that vault. Marius Georgiou next to go for Cyprus. Well, I do like this gymnast. Certainly be pushing for an all-round medal. Under somersault with the half turn. Locks out well in the handstand position. Judges looking for nice straight arms. Oh, and no hesitation there. That's a very difficult skill. And a nice little tempo to the routine. Locks well in the handstand, just needs a good solid dismount. Plenty of height on the double bike. Well, that's the best power of our routine from the team from Cyprus. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if he makes the top eight placing there. I think he will, Matt. Mm. Yes, they're building well, aren't they? Georgiou, 14.3 for parallel bars. Twelve point seven for Ethan, his brother Samuel to go next. Samuel got a silver at the Oceania Championships earlier on this year. And a powerfully built gymnast. There's the strength elements we're talking about. And he performs them well, holding the line. He swings well as well. He has obviously a good feel for this apparatus. Same good style that all the gymnasts from New Zealand have shown or rings. Beautiful flat back in the handstand. Double back with a full twist with ease. Just not the same, mate. Oh, look at that. 14.35 for Georgiou on the parallel bars. It's the third highest score we've seen on P-bars today. So, yes, see you in the P-bar final. No doubt about it. So just I'm going to now. Fourth Cypriot on P-bars. Well, can he add to the team total? Oh, that was much better. No hesitation there. Quickly up to the handstand. Oh, a little bit of bent arm, and he's having to work now. Come on. Oh, oh. I was just going to say whipped up into handstand there, but just caught a little bit late, causing his arms to bend. Sometimes something like that will upset the gymnast slightly. Needs to control for the dismount. Up into the double bike. A bit disappointed with that routine, I think. Yeah, but they've already got the three scores in the bag, and that's where it's so helpful to have four up and three to count. Yes, I don't think parallel bars will have done their cause any harm. They've really been strong.
Well, Cyprus will go ahead of Canada and Australia. 13.2 for New Zealand, who at the moment are in and around that seventh position, but we'll get confirmation of the standings halfway around. So all teams have now competed on three pieces. I stand corrected. <laughs> We're halfway through, aren't we, that round? <laughs> England standing by to vault. So Scotland will be competing on parallel bars, England on vault. England currently ahead of Cyprus, Canada in that third place spot. Scotland are in fifth ahead of Wales, but still a lot of gymnastics left to go. England vaults. Scotland T-bars. Bit of pressure on the England men because only three gymnasts will be performing on the vault. But the three are performing are great vaulters. Scotland will go first up in their little group on the parallel bars. And Cyprus will be first up on the high bar. It's where the thrills and spills. Gymnast just coming towards the end of the warm-up then, at the start of this fourth rotation. First chance for us to see high bar. And the Cypriot gymnast will be up first. Well, Carlos Carey first up on to high bar then. It's just 19 years old. It's a big ask for a young gymnast. Lovely. Nice. Two good release and catches, that's his close bar element, the 
Straddle forwards, the endo. He's been cleanly through. He needs the good dismount, which he gets. Not the classiest routine, but it was solid. And he, no major mistakes. Well, this could be where we see Cyprus just slightly drop down the standings with a riskier routine. Such a difficult piece of apparatus to build big scores on. And this one is the opposite end, the vault, New Zealand. 4.8 for the difficulty. Wraps in the Sukahara with the double twist. Uh, Jordan O'Connell ins the national champion on this piece of apparatus. 25 years old. Well, they dropped back a little bit on the last piece of apparatus, the rings, but uh, hoping that vault will project them back up the table. He's also the national all-around champion as well, and um, he'll be hoping for a place in that all-around final. Just a reminder, the top 18 gymnasts after this qualification day will enter into that all-around final, and the top eight scores on each piece of apparatus will enter into the individual apparatus finals. Uh, Scotland just chalking up and ready to go on parallel bars. Cameron Lynn, he's been a key player. He's just 19 years old and he's been going up first on every piece for Scotland, just steadying the nerves, steadying them down. Nice mount. Looks steady. Very nice handstand shape. Parallel bars is all about control, swing to a control, to a handstand. Very good line. Here comes the big work. The flight along the parallel bars. Then the full turn. Oh, and that was a definite error. That's one whole mark off a fall on the apparatus. First real error from Scotland that we've seen. He's recovered well. Steadying into the double pike dismount. It was a very good routine, just that one error, and it will be costly. Well, for those of you who have just joined us, um, countries get the um, option to put four gymnasts up and three scores count. Uh, you add the top three scores together for the team total on each piece of apparatus, and then you add all six pieces together for the final team total at the end of the night. Yes, George Yu. Second of the Cypriot gymnasts up on a high bar. Stand by for a few little fireworks here. Well, room for improvement after the first gymnast on this piece of apparatus, but this is going to be a big release. Oh, the Kovac with the full twist. Highest difficulty. Beautiful height over the top of the bar there. With the straddle position. Gymnasts have to not only perform release and catch elements but skills close to the bar in different types of grip is it all the requirements just needs a big dismount propels in high into the stadium double twisting double back great performance beautiful form throughout that routine he made the uh, world final on high bar but he looks like he's he's holding a bit of an injury there. He's hobbling off. Jordan O'Connor in scores the 13.85 for Vault. He he hobbled off of uh, parallel bars as well. Mm. So, but it, it, they needed that score. It was a different level of routine from their first gymnast. Well, they're doing everything they can to stay ahead of Scotland, stay ahead of Wales. Cameron Lynn scores a 12.65. Would have been a very good score without mm. that error. It's still not a bad score at all. Not at actually. all. So you think, you know, they set out to surprise everybody, did Scotland, maybe give England a run for their money. Next up to try and do just that is Hamish Carter, who's been busy for Scotland today. Yep, we've seen him on every piece so far. Beautiful. 
smoothly along. That lovely mixture of control. That was a great Healy turn. Good front somersault in the middle of the routine there. The full turn, then the half turn. Here comes the dismount, well-controlled double pike. Exactly what Scotland needed there, <laughs> and Hamish knows it. That'll calm them down. They'll put two more gymnasts up and then pick the three top ones. 14-1-5 for high bar. That's the highest high bar score we've seen in these qualification competitions today. It's ahead by some distance as well, with uh, by over a mark. But this lad got the highest P bar score of the day, and he's a class act. Well, starts with the in bar skill. Oh, that's nice work. The squat dislocate with the full turn, and again with the half. He'll need a release, and he's winding up for it now. Here we go. Oh, beautiful height there. Took Kovac, he'll go again with the full twist. This is spectacular work. Change grip into the forward long swing. Full turn, call the Zulim in. Bit of a crowd pleaser. In bar work. Now. Just needs a solid dismount to propel himself into the high bar final. Full twist in double back, spots the landing. Oh. Well, they keep getting better and better. He had all the time of the day to look down to see where he wanted to land that one. And how graceful through the air. Even in his release and catches, he just looked calm, simple and very, very effective. These releases looked absolutely pinpoint accuracy, didn't they? Mm. He caught at full stretch, like we're always saying. What's Hamish got on parallel bars? It's a 13.6. It's a strong score for Scotland. He looks a little confused. Mm. Frank Baines next to go. Out of retirement. This we were taking up, talking earlier on, just finishing up his qualifications for physiotherapy. Yes, and he's such a good technician, such a stylish gymnast. Been absolutely at the top of his tree at the previous Commonwealth Games, but this is lovely work. Everything hit exactly. No marks given away. Very secure with the pirouetting. Oh, and floats the double pike dismount high above the bar. That was really very nice work indeed. Yeah, style personified there from Frank Baines. Beautiful gymnast. Well, you'll struggle to find a more stylish parallel bar worker in this competition. 13-9 for Marius Georgiou. The Georgiou's are in the final. One and two for Cyprus so far and Ibar, and another to go. And Gornas next to hang the bar. I'll tell you what, they're going to be pushing all the way for a medal for Cyprus. Well, that's a good start. Straight catch, Jeb, a little bit close and a bend of the arms. So a tenth eye for side. See how he works the bar. That's much better stretch in the straddle catch, Jeb. You can just see how much effort is going through the bar. The cables moving. That's the in bar skill. Original one arm. In bar with the stalder, just winds up for a big dismount. High kicks up, full twist in double back. No problem there. Well, anything that Angonas could achieve was a bonus. They've already posted three scores. Oh, Cyprus are loving it.
hey, they could be on the podium. I think they will at this rate, Matt. I think I would agree. I mean, they've got a couple of tricky pieces to go. 13, 3 5 for Frank and Scotland on P bars. High bar next for them. Pavel Kanyenko next for Scotland. Saw fabulous work on the rings. He was fourth at the British Championships earlier this year. Ooh, lovely. Nice back somersault. Yeah, lots of energy in this routine, as well as control. Oh, he just was a bit offline there. He saved it well into the double front. Wow, he had to squeeze that dismount in. But some very difficult work. 40.35 was Wales' score on P-bars. 13.25 for Angonis. So he does push Cyprus's score up a little bit as that fourth gymnast score will count. Chance to see Ethan Dix vault. Four point eight difficulty. Powerful approach. Oh, easily round. Again, the Sukahara with the double twist, just that slight adjustment. Yeah, nice, sweet little vault that one. And straight off the runway, so he won't be aiming for a place in the vault final. Gymnast go for two vaults if that is the case, but straight down the line there, straight down the middle. Great camera angle, that Christine. Yeah, it's the vault that these gymnasts can sort of perform without any great jeopardy. They're well capable of making that double twist. 13 8, 5. And therefore, sort of giving themselves a good chance of a nine for execution. Pavel Kalijenko, 13.8 for P bars. That pushes Scotland up. And you can see there it says uh, the second place spot, but. There's still a lot of gymnastics to go. Including Team England on vault. Canada on P-bars, they're just warming up here. As the groups are, are split into two, so you've got two countries going round together and they both get a little warm up before they compete. See, so just to limber up and for safety reasons, especially on a piece like high bar. The long old wait if you're uh, you've got a whole country to go first and you don't actually touch the apparatus. Australia swinging well, even in the warm up. It's Tyson Bull, I think. Well, he'll be wanting to uh, lift the high bar title, that's for certain. Gianni at the end of the vault runway. For England, I think he's going to start things off, and no doubt he'll be doing two vaults, aiming to get into that vault final. Such a powerful gymnast, we've watched him through the junior ranks into the seniors. And one of the gymnasts that's been a, a key player in the British squad as well. Come back from... Uh injury to make the Olympic team last year. Come on. Go on, Gianni. Oh! oh! Fabulous triple twist. Well, you won't see form through the air much better than that. You watch this, legs absolutely locked together. Pin sharp. That was just supreme vaulting. Little bit of a separation on the way on, wraps are in three <laughs> twists. 
He'll take a point one for the line, but uh, he's a real supremo on the twisting. Straight across to Hottie Bar. Claire Mason Stevens. Got a silver on this piece at the Oceana Games just a few weeks back. A well, good position there on the turn into the handstand. Original work there in the bar, the Steinemann swing. There's a lot of strain on the shoulders, but he'll need a release and catch. He drifts nicely over the top of the bar. Straight catch, Jev. Again, showing the invert position. Crowd plays that. Just needs a good dismount. Sets up high, full twist in the double straight. Good start for Australia. Interesting how gymnasts work the code. There's a big book full of moves, isn't there, Chris? All graded uh, by the letter. And uh, gymnasts can pick their moves that are you know, suited to them, to their body type, to the kind of gymnastics they like to create. And that's how you build your difficulty. On we go, with Kenji. Kenji over on... Uh, P bars for Canada. Competition going very, very well for Canada. They've got four golds in the team final. They've got two silvers. They've got three bronze. No stranger to the podium. And this gymnast looks very accomplished on the parallel bars. Upper arms are strapped, so I'm sure we're going to see some exciting somersaults. He's shown us beautiful control, beautiful lines. Super straight shape. Oh no, just the double front off. I'm not sure whether he caught the rail there. There was a bit of a noise. But uh, that was very clean, classy work. And Gianni, 14.9 for that first vault. And he put up a 14.35 for the second vault. So that's an average of 14.625. Let's go, Jack! Next to vault for England is Jake Jarman. He's impressed today in this qualification competition and this men's team final. We're going to see more of him throughout the Commonwealth Games. Well, he can spin like a top. Oh, first fantastic opening bolt. Handspring, double front somersault with the half turn. I mean, it looks so easy. I mean, he was impressive on floor, Chris, and, um, you know, we've seen all of that acrobatic skill here. Yep. He turns so easily, doesn't he? There's no just squeezing that half turn round. He's got it with time to spare. Claire Mason Stevens, a 13.45 for high bar. Worked the code well. Strong score for Australia. Jesse Moore, next to go. Just 19 years of age. But the inexperience not showing. He's had a good competition. And he's been a key player in this Australian team. A team that's still within a shout. And very often a very good team on high bar. That was a beautiful turn right on top of the bar. Oh, and a stolder into Kachev. It's unusual to see from the men. Big straight Kachev, immediate straddle Kachev, linking the elements. Lovely swinging in that dislocation grip. He's shown us good variety. There's the close bar. You have to do an element close to the bar. And of course, you have to do a big dismount. In he goes. Oh. Double straight, double twist. Super work here. Watch out. Here come Australia. It's the fourth rotation of six pieces. 
So there's still a lot of competition still to go in this men's team final. And qualification competition for the individual apparatus finals. 13.15 for Kenji on P-bars. And the slight 19-year-old here. Matisse Jalbert. A light frame. He should swing these bars well, Craig. Certainly showed him really relishing the opportunity to step up at this Commonwealth Games. Big skill, the under some assault with a half turn. Come on, young man. Has to bend the arm, take an extra swing. Much more positive there, the full turn around one arm. Precise movement. He'll pirouette and travel back to the centre of the bars. Good speed there on the Tipelt. And a big dismount, the double front somersault. I don't know where he pulled that from, because for a little lad, he's got a big heart. He did well. Bit of a shaky middle section, but um, he certainly recovered well. Beautiful dismount. And he'll take every ounce of this experience. Jesse Moore, 14.15. It's big for Australia. Yeah, what a cauldron to be performing in, Craig. You'll remember back in the day at the Commonwealth, that feeling. All eyes are on you. I think it was on black and white TV back then, Matt. But yes, back in 98, it was a real battle with Australia. They were the favourites. And we ended up taking the title for the men for the first time. Seems such a long time ago. And the level of difficulty these gymnasts nowadays never ceases to amaze me. Well, Mitchell Morgan's next to go. Third on this piece at the Australian Champs earlier on this year. We've seen the calibre of the gymnasts from Australia on high bar, so he's amongst good company. And super Kovacs somersault over the bar. Are we seeing it with the twist? We are. And really good precision. So then the Kachev. In the straight and the straddle position. So we've seen four release and recatches. Very nice hop, full turn there. As we say, the gymnasts have to use forward and backward grips. Oh, with squat dislocation right out up to handstand. Builds the speed, creates the lift, oh. the double straight with the double twist. This is a very good piece of apparatus for Australia. Yep, here they come. Watch out, podium finish. They've got two pieces left to go. Jake Jarman. Scored 14.75 for his first vault for England. But his second vault, I'm sure we'll see it when uh, we're into the break. He scored 15.2 for vault number two, which got him the highest vault score of the day. 12.7 for Jalbert. Yeah, just going back to Jake's score on vault for England. That puts him ahead of Gianni. Regini Moran, who has the second highest vault score of the day, day, both of them in that vault final. Chris Kaji next to go for Canada over on P bars. Third gymnast up, Felix Dolce, no doubt will follow him. Good solid start, straight arms locked out. Oh, just a little bit. Over the handstand there, recovered well. He whipped that one over, didn't he? He's quite a compact and dynamic gymnast. Short levers, which is a good thing in gymnastics. Travels along the bars to the end. He'll come back to the middle now. In the tip belt, plenty of height there above the bars. He needs to get into handstand a little bit quicker. It's precise so far, double front with the half turn, good solid routine. Yeah, Canada needed that, thinking of that 
battle between Cyprus, Australia, Canada, Wales. It's all getting Scotland. fizzy now. Yeah, well, Scotland at this stage looks strong. It's all culminating in the last two pieces. Well, Tyson Bull is the uh, Australian champion. He was in the Olympic final as well. Brace yourselves here. Each of the Australian gymnasts swings with a beautiful straight line. Here he goes, lifts straight with the full twist. Tucked with the full twist. No break in the swing at all, the Kachev. He generates swing very nicely and then a lovely Markalov that he can giant out of, long swing out of. The one arm showing a great variety of elements and every one of them performed pretty accurately. The turns are on top of the bar. Oh, but it's never over till you've presented to the judge. And he just let that dismount fly away from him. It wasn't even a particularly difficult dismount. He just put a single twist in. He will be mighty cross with himself. Well, he will because Mitchell Morgan's his teammate has a, a score of 13.85 well, and he's currently with his compatriot, the second Australian in the high bar final. So can he stay ahead of Mitchell Morgans and get a chance to get into the high bar final? 13.9 for Canada. Now Felix Dolce has had an absolute stormer of a qualification competition and certainly doing his job for Canada. He's got beautifully graceful lines, so no doubt that will continue on this piece. Well, I've been so impressed with this young man so far. That's how he works the parallel bars. Precise movements, straight arms are required. It's looking good so far. Gymnasts have to perform skills, not just above the bars, but below. Lovely height there, the straddle front somersault. He'll pirouette and travel back down the bars. Good, clean work. Locks well. Now, big dismount. Double front with the half turn. He's having the time of his life, Matt. I'll tell you what, <laughs> he's, he's going to give everybody a run for their money in that all around. He's got a little bit of a look of a champion about him, hasn't he? He has. The confident air. Well, if not at these games, maybe the next, because he's only 20. This overhead camera shows you. Look at that dismount. Very impressive. Tyson Ball, 13.25. And what a great name for the Commonwealth here in Birmingham, thinking of that iconic bull in the opening ceremony. He's all over that, is Tyson. So, chance to look back at the vaults from Team England. First up, James Hall. Well, he's been calm all the way around the competition. Can he keep it up on this piece of apparatus? Wraps him for the two and a half twist. Of course he can. <laughs> the Iceman of gymnastics. Well done, James. He really is such a great team, Captain James. Cool under pressure. Not flashy, just gets on with the job. I've never seen him yet flustered, Christine, in competition. I'm sure underneath he's a bit like a swan going across a lake, but he's just so calm and, like you said, a great captain to have in your team. Well, there. Boston at 14.35 is the first one up. He's absolutely perfect and what you want from your captain. Felix Dolce, 14.4. 
for parallel bars. That's going to pop him up into the P-bar final. Now England ahead of Cyprus, Canada in third. Australia leads Scotland, who were down in fifth, but they've pipped Wales, who are in sixth at this stage. Still, there's two pieces of apparatus to go in this men's team final. Go then with the fifth rotation. Five of six pieces. Jesse Moore. 19 years old. Second in the Oceana Championships on floor. Kenji for Canada of Don Hybar. And our first look at the Canadian team on the high bar. Lovely close bar work there, very unusual. Stalled her out. 
super, oh, oh, super high catcher, but he only caught with one hand. You can sort of see just a little bit of the fatigue coming into the gymnast now. You're down to the last two pieces, because really, he had both hands on that cle cleanly. Yeah, I mean, the aim is to try and catch, not with bent arms, but more at a full stretch. And he was going for the minimum possible deduction, but that comes at a price. He probably will get the credit for that move as he sort of half caught it. So he hasn't repeated it. He's just done actually a beautiful double straight with full twist. Very nice dismount. But that's a disappointing first man up for Canada. Yeah, what a shame. But as we said before, and we keep saying it, there's four gymnasts up and there's three to count, but it piles the pressure on the following gymnasts. Team England up on P bars. See Gianni, who's just cheering on James Hall at the moment. We'll let you know what's happening there, but hopefully we'll show you it shortly as well. But for now, we have to concentrate on Jesse Moore and his score of 12.85. James. Is through. Back to floor for Claire Mason Stevens. Impressive so far in the vault. Very powerful gymnast. Oh, huge opening tumble. Up pike front somersault. Physique really lends himself to this piece of apparatus, and that was a very difficult combination. Full twist into a double front somersault. Oh, and the third tumble. Double twisting, double back. Showing control. Lift a handstand held for the required two seconds. Gymnast, four requirements on each piece of apparatus and a non-acrobatic skill is required. Beautiful two and a half twist into a nice high straight front. Easily rounding the double twist. Very impressed with this young man on this piece of apparatus, showing great composure, working well within his capabilities. Final tumble, the double Arabian. Good, solid routine for Australia. Oh, they're building. They're building. Pulling out all of the difficulty and matching it with execution. Oh, what, a, what a shame for Kenji on high bar, but still a strong score of 12.05 with a fall. I think that's what he's thinking as well. <laughs> yeah, because they can be very low sometimes, the... Um... The scores on high bar. Well, James scored 13.45 for Team England. It's now Gianni Regini Ryan's turn. And this lad can't half swing the P bars. First at the British Championships earlier this year. Cleanly through those first few elements. It's all about swinging and controlling it very nicely onto the one rail. And then out. Super high front somersault. And lovely lift into the handstand. Snap the legs together. Full turn. He's almost le leisurely on the apparatus. And double pike. He knows where he is doing that every day of the week. That was a lovely routine. Class act. Gianni surely is going to make a P-bar final. Nothing can be confirmed until all of the gymnasts have competed, but it will be the top eight scores from this qualification, coupled with a team final. Claire Mason-Stevens, 13.4 on floor. But, yep. Gianni, no doubt, will be the 
Well, there's still a lot of good gymnasts from England to come on PFARs. Well, I'll, I'll stick my neck out and say that's a, a parallel ball final. Well, James Ketty from Australia. You watch the power here. He's absolutely phenomenal at tumbling. You can see how fired up he is. There seems to be a real sense of positivity in the Australian camp, these last few rotations of the competition. Another great performer on the vault. Big second tumble. And just managed to stay inside the floor. Did double well. twisting, double back. Easily rounding that two and a half. Double pike front somersault. It's like this guy's got springs in his ankles. Oh, unfortunate there. The two and a half twist tried to combine it into the tuck front with a full. Now classes a full. Just glances on the clock there, checking the time. I know this gymnast had. Expectation for a floor final. Really wanted to medal on floor. Needs to finish strong. Stands up easily around on the final twist. But unfortunately, the hand down will be very costly, Christine. It will, and it's a shame because there was so much great work there. Well, Gianni is actually the current leader on floor. But 14, <laughs> age five. For Gianni Regini Moran for parallel bars. That's a huge score as he makes way for the former parallel bar world champion, Joe Fraser. Second at the British Championships earlier this year, and he's carrying a foot injury. So you'll have to go easy on the dismount here. Super style. Oh, very difficult elements combined. That's where the difficulty score racks up. Oh, and he's made that difficult long swing onto one rail. Moving smoothly, very sure on his hand elements. A tiny shuffle there, packing the difficulty in. It's the 10 most difficult elements. There we are, the one rail into the Healy. Had to bend his arms to get up to handstand. Double front oh. with half turn. And that hurt his foot a bit, I think, you can see in his face. Well, he absolutely smashed the difficulty. He went all out for this home crowd. His primary school is just around the corner and he was devastated that he couldn't do the six pieces of apparatus, but hopefully this will go some way to ease that frustration. What a performance from Team England here. Well, two enormously impressive routines there from Team England with Gianni and Joe, full of difficulty. You can see why he was world champion on this piece of apparatus. We'll be back for his score very shortly, but we're going to join Canada over on high bar. We've thoroughly enjoyed watching Felix Dolce and his other pieces of apparatus. Here he is with his penultimate piece. Well, he swings efficiently so far. Accurate in the handstand, the squat dislocate there with the half turn, but he needs a release and it's going to be big. Oh, look at the height there, fingertips. Beautiful work, good extension. Oh! Felix, he was going all out for difficulty. He was packing it in. It was one move after another after another. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't even his most difficult move. That sometimes happens when you've done the really difficult ones. You don't give quite full concentration to that one. I think what happened when he caught, his feet were just down to the ground a little bit where he had the extension 
on the previous release and catch, and that's the first mistake we've seen from him in this competition. Will he do it again? I think he will. There you go, straddle, no problem at all. That's the in-bar skill. Just needs a good dismount. Nice and safe, double twisting, double back. This young man will put together a great competition in the all-around. That's going to be an absolute flyer, isn't it? I can't wait for the men's all-around competition, which will be on Sunday. Joe Fraser sadly will not be in it. Everyone was thinking this is his year to be Commonwealth champion, but 14.6 puts him in with the second highest P-bar score behind Gianni. Look at the difficulty score there, Matt. 6.5. Huge. Huge. Jake Jarman, an ex-gymnast from Team England. And the quality just continues. This is the strength in depth in Team England. Well, smooth, efficient. Positive on the turns. Needs to be secure with his hand placements. Much better there. Oh, that was lovely work. Way oh, beautiful work. You can hear the team cheering him on. They know his routine. They know the bits he needs to focus on. Lovely swingy work. Double yes. front half out. Super work. He had to fight during that routine, but he did fight, he did. What a dismount. That was absolutely superb. Well, James Hall has scored a 13.45. He was first up, so anything that Jake can do better than that will be a bonus. Well, as you said, Christine, it was a bit of a fight, but it shows actually the grit and determination of this exciting young gymnast. Wasn't always in the correct position to start, but sometimes you've got to just make adjustments there. Real composure. Quetty scores a 12.1 for floor. What a shame. Yeah, he won't be in that floor final. No, I was going to say that's well off the pace, really, for a floor final. What a shame. And Olchi as well, shaking his head as well. 12.8. No chance of him in the high bar final either. Well, that'll have cost him a mark, Christine, and I don't think he had enough hang under the bar to get credited with the skill, so that score will definitely go up if he gets through that routine. So will it be James's score or Jake's score to count here? 13.45 for James. Courtney just relaxing. He's not going to be doing anything other than rings here. That's correct. But they are dominating this team final from start to finish. Just pulling away. Cyprus to go yet, which might close the gap, but they have really dominated this team final. Jake scores in, actually, it's 13-8. <clears throat> so that's the one that will count. 8-2 on the execution, 5-6 on the difficulty. We didn't see James, but I guess he must have made an error for that 13.45. I saw just over the top of the monitor on the straddle front somersault. He just had to do a, a, a shuffle of the grip, which will have cost him a little bit. So down on what he could have done, but it uh, didn't really affect the team score. We're back in for another little warm-up. This is uh, sort of the halfway stage of the group rotation. George, you <laughs> enjoying the Commonwealth Games here. And there's a real feeling of friendliness, camaraderie and respect amongst all of the gymnasts. The level of risk, what they're pushing themselves to do, it 
defies gravity, it really does. And that mutual respect that the gymnasts have for each other. They know the hard work, they know the effort, they know the bravery that goes in. Lakoris now on floor, chance to see him. First up for Cyprus. And a relatively straightforward opening tumble, just a double tuck. But clean. Double twist. All good landings, but not so much difficulty. Of course, you take your top 10 elements and you add the difficulty level of all those 10 elements to get your difficulty score, your D score. So uh, his D score will probably be quite the lowest of the team. But he's not giving away a lot of marks. His control is good. His landings have been precise. Two and a half there. Good finish. He's done his job. He's open for the team without error. Well, one more piece to go after this. Fascinated to see where Cyprus are going to be in the mix. Pavel. Pavel now for Scotland up on to high bar. A shaky start there, but he's managed to get through it. Well, he powers into the second release, a little bit close again, the bending of the arms. He's got to really work the bar much better there on the straddle catch, Jev. As we've seen, it's about just hitting these routines start to finish. Try and control the nerves. Winds up for the dismount. Kicks in, double twisting, double back, good, solid dismount. Got a little tense at the start, but uh, just what they need for the opener. First of four routines. And as quick as you like, they're helping each other to chalk the bar up and adjust the wires. Yeah, the coach's job to adjust the tension of the wires. The team members to help with the different chalking up. Twelve point two for the first Cypriot gymnast. Gornas doing well to stay in there. Double tuck somersault. We've seen many gymnasts doing full twisting, double backs. So this is a bit down on difficulty. We'll step out there. Good control. And technique, lifting with very straight arms. He needs some more difficult tumbles to compete. And there we get good one and a half twisting front. Final tumble, round off backflip, two and a half twist. Well negotiated, but not the level of the work that we've seen from Cyprus on some apparatus. Well, this is why it's so difficult to call it as you move from piece to piece. 12.55 for Pavel. Well, Cameron Lynn next up on a horizontal bar. He was just outside the medals at the British Championships on this piece. When you bear in mind the quality of the British team, that's going some. Well, big callbacks to start. 
just what they need. Change the tempo into the straight catch. Have good extension on the catch. Again with the straddle. Nice full turn on one arm into the mixed grip. And again, showing intricate work within the hands. Different positions, hop full turn. In bar skill before the dismount, come on. Oh, double twisting, double back, and what a shame. Just released a little bit too soon, which threw him forward a little bit. Lost a bit of height, disappointing. That's a full mark for Scotland. Yeah, that's going to be costly now. 11.8 for Angonas. Low for Flo. Marius Georgiou will have something to say about that. And that's what he says, full twisting, front somersault, immediate double front. And twisting double back, so he's shown us great tumbling forward and backwards. The speed of his tumbles, Chris. Yeah, two and a half into straight front. You can just see the difference between the gymnast that went before him. He's purposeful and fast. He's really quite a special gymnast. And he can change that speed into static control. Double twist, well landed. Big concentration for this final tumble. Here comes the round off into the triple twist, a step back. But that were, I think that's a piece of apparatus that bothers him. And he, he will be well pleased to have finished like that. <laughs> well, he's just got the one piece of apparatus left to go. You can start to feel the tension lifting. Desperately wants a place in that all-round final. Cameron Lane, 12.05 for high bar. And Frank then, Frank Baines for Scotland with it all to do. This is a big routine for him, big routine for Scotland. They need every tenth. Beautiful start, straight body above the bar. Works the bar so well, understands the timing. Straight cat Jev, straddle cat Jev. It's going to work in the bar, that's beautiful work. Squat dislocate. Again, he works his piece of apparatus just like the parallel bars. So graceful. Such a beautiful shape in the air. Kicks into the dismount. Full twist in, double back. Well, Scotland needed that. And they've needed you tonight, Frank. What a great job. Yeah, absolutely nailed it. Perfect timing as well. Georgiou scores a 12.7. 5-4 on the difficulty. Callis Carey again with a job to do here for Cyprus. They were in contention. And a very nice double pike front somersault at the start. Two and a half twist, a little bit wild on the landing. Oh, and he landed two feet right out of the floor then. Much better there.
Oh, two and a half into straight front, but that came to grief as well. He looked like he took quite a long time to get into the corner and a little bit untidy. Good triple twist, but they looked a bit short on confidence on the floor, Cyprus. Yeah. Their work hasn't been bad, but they, you know, he took a long time to get into the corner as if I'm not sure I can do this tumble. Yeah, you sort of feel a bit of competition fatigue, like you were saying, setting yeah. in as well, Chris, that, um, you know, here we are now on the fifth piece. It's a long way around. 13.25 for Frank Baines and for Scotland. Yeah, when you've got two sets of teams on, on each apparatus, it's a long competition. Hamish Carter with a huge routine for Scotland. Can he keep them in contention? Can he put them on the podium? Well, they need a big routine. Oh, that's a beautiful release. Straddle catch Jeff again. Good extension on the catch. Lovely out of the squat dislocate. Showing a little bit of flair and originality. Stalled it. Hot full turn. Now, must concentrate for the dismount. Seen so many falter at this stage. Full twist in double back. Oh! Oh! Hey, hey, Hamish Carter, he's having an absolute stormer for Scotland. What a high bar routine. Yes, come on, join the party. Well, he wasn't fatigued, was he? He's watched a few other mistakes come along and he was not going to make that same error. Slightly more subdued over on floor. 11.05 for Chari and for Cyprus. The story of what could have been. I agree, though, Christine. I think there's a little chink in the armour there for the team from Cyprus. Floor is not a favourite piece of apparatus for them. They almost looked like they took themselves out of it before they started. Jordan O'Connell ends on New Zealand. 25 years old, the fourth of the New Zealanders up on to P-bars. So everything he can get will be a bonus. And uh, I would expect P-bars to be a good apparatus for New Zealand. They have technically good gymnasts, very stylish. Lovely somersault, very calmly done, well worked out of. Super double pike with the legs so straight, toes pointed. He just didn't quite come out at the right moment. A couple of steps backwards. There's that very precise, good front somersault. You can see what a straight line. There's no deviation. Thirteen five for Hamish Carter. That'll do. That will do. So Hamish wrapped in that dismount and that rounds off this rotation. One more piece of apparatus to go then in this men's team final and qualification for the individual apparatus finals and the men's all-around competition as well. We'll get confirmation of how things are looking for the team final in just a second. 12.55 for Jordan O'Connell ins. So now we can do the sums and show you how things look going into the last piece. England ahead of Canada. Cyprus in that third place spot. Scotland just behind Australia and Wales are currently in sixth. But it's quite tight between second and fifth. 
England are flying, walking away with this final. We can afford a few mistakes on the last piece of apparatus, which will be high bar. England great on the high bar. But rightly so, Matt, they are allowed a few mistakes. They've got a good cushioning. Final piece of apparatus is floor for Scotland. Frank Baines, first out of the traps. And a lovely first tumble run. Quite a tall gymnast. He has to work hard to control his landings, not go outside of the 12 meter square. Super double twist. But he's a gymnast who is does his non-acrobatic work as beautifully as the acrobatic skills. You can see the tension through his legs, muscles tight. That's what makes a gymnast stylish, always taking everything to the maximum. Double Arabian, super. Super routine. What a way to round off his team final. Frank Baines back from retirement. And he's still got it. It was a good decision to come back. Certainly was. He won't be regretting that at all. Goodness for Cyprus then. Well, they struggled a bit on the floor. But still in contention, but they'll have to focus on this piece of apparatus and... This gymnast starting well. Oh. oh. I spoke too soon. Gymnast of 30 seconds. Once they fall from the apparatus to get back on. Luckily in this format, Matt, as you mentioned earlier, it's only the top three scores out the four. So it just puts a little bit of pressure on the rest of the team. As he mounts back onto the pommel horse. 
picks up the momentum. That's better. Up into the handstand, little flicker of the arms. Well, disappointing start and even more pressure on the guys from Cyprus. They're a bit all or nothing, aren't they? They're either brilliant or one thing goes wrong and it's a bit of a, oh, I don't think I can do this. Yeah, they seem to be flying P-bars and high bar and uh, Flo's just knocked the wind from the sails, Christine. Yeah, very surprised. 13-3 for Frank Baines. The first score for Scotland is a strong one. Pavel Konajenko is next, the 20-year-old Scottish all-around champion. <laughs> Very dynamic, super double front somersault. Lovely double twisting front. He met the floor with such control that he punched out easily and again. Two and a half, full twisting front. That's a really quite difficult combination. Snaps the heels together to show control. Oh, but that was a mistake. He let his knees touch the floor. A fall is a fall, whether it's from a tumble or from a more basic move. Super triple twist. Nerves creeping in a bit, I think, in the final round, Matt. Yeah, they know they're pushing it. They're, they're going for every single tenth, and sometimes when you've got your eye on a prize like that, you just create a bit of tension. 10.7 for Angonis. Difficult piece to finish on. It's a long old competition. And this piece of apparatus, Ilias Georgiou, is on pommel horse. Takes no prisoners. Yeah, he'll have to focus on his routine. It's a good double leg circle shape. Well done. Keep the legs nice and straight. Keep pushing down, keep the momentum and rhythm is going well so far. It's difficult work. And again, come on, little flicker of the legs, but it's better than a fall. Up into the handstand, much better there. Well needed, a sigh of relief. Very good indeed from the 23-year-old. <laughs> he's celebrating, he's through, it's job done. Six pieces. That was much more like it. Yes, in the bag. It's a bit like a tennis match from one side of the arena to the other, and they go in like for like. So then Scotland will have to get through the floor. Well, we joined New Zealand on high bar. Twelve six from Ethan Dick. Jordan O'Connell ins. Next to swing the horizontal bar. This will be the last piece for New Zealand. What does the next few minutes hold for this man? Third gymnast for New Zealand. Ooh, beautifully flighted Markoloff. And here you can see the shape change means we've got a catch air, but he was just too casual with the reverse of his feet and the lift of his chest. He was going for style, wasn't he? You could see he was going for height and he just pushed it a bit too much. That's right, and I'm not sure that that gets credited because they, the judges say you have to have a momentary hang. I don't think he, he literally just patted the bar as he went past. With this in the straddle position, a little bit easier that because you see the bar earlier. But lovely line. 
Good with the turns. Oh, that was a bit late coming out, that Stolder. Everything's meant to go up to handstand. Here's the dismount, full twisting, double straight. <laughs> and he lost his trousers <laughs> on the landing. Goodness me, it's not going his way today. Well, that, that's taking the concept of release and catch to a whole new level. <laughs> Pavel Karnazenko scores 11.65 for Floor, Scotland. Twelve point eight five for Ilias Georgiou. So Scotland finished on a total score of two hundred and thirty-six point three. So that's the score that they're all trying to beat with the six pieces. Marius Georgiou next for Cyprus. And he can work this piece as well. Very talented all around it. He is, and such a stylish gymnast as well. When it works, it works. And as Christine said, when it's a bad day, it's a bad day, but he's done so well so far. And his team will need every ounce of his talent right now. He's built the difficulties, travelling well up and down the horse. No hesitation into the handstand. That's what he's done. Has he dislocated his thumb? No. Cramp. cramp. He's got a bit of cramp. OK. <laughs> I thought he dislocated his thumb there when he stopped. Yeah, I thought that as well. Brilliant routine. Brilliant routine under that pressure. Is that enough to put Cyprus back into the medals? It certainly was a very impressive routine. It does look like his thumb, actually. He did yank it there. I think it is probably yeah. his thumb. Oh, gosh, poor lad. On we go with New Zealand. Kudinov. Watch this. The somersault oh. forwards with half turn over the bar to recatch. Oh, but that was wild, far, far too late. He was grappling for the bar. You have to commit yourself this side of the bar. Yes. He kicked it over the bar. That was a shame. The first release and catch was beautiful. So he has 30 seconds to get back on the bar or the judges consider the routine finished. So, lovely Stuk Kachev. And in the straddle position as well. Always well extended. Full stretch through the shoulders. Classy one-armed work. Markov towards the end of the routine, that's quite unusual. But that was a little bit of a late pirouette. Good Stolder. Now he'll change the swing so that he can lift up. Full twisting, double straight. There was a lot of great work in there, but it was marred by a mistake in the middle. Lose the value of the element and a fall. Jordan scores 10.6 for high bar. Jordan Collins. Well, Marius Georgiou at 13.85. That sees him in the Pommel Horse final. He's pleased. He's, no, With a dislocated he's, thumb. Say, he's put his thumb back in and uh, he's in the final. Charlie now for Cyprus. Well, they've carried a fall, so enormous pressure on the final competitor for Cyprus. A great speed on this piece of apparatus in the circle, and as I've said before, oh, the faster you go, the easier it is to balance. Well, that is a big loss for Cyprus. That's a whole mark. One full mark. And the value of the move. 
and he was going so well. He, I was just really marvelling at what good pommel horse workers they are. He seemed to drop, didn't he? I mean, he didn't just, just, just brush the handle. I mean, he went, properly went there. And straight off for the dismount. Very costly, last two piece of apparatus, floor and pommels for Cyprus. Oh. Is it going to take them off the podium? Well, get your calculator out, Matt. <laughs> I think they're just ahead, actually, of Wales. Scotland. They're ahead of Wales and they're ahead of Scotland. Where are Australia? Well, we'll find out very shortly. And where will Scotland end up? Hamish Carter. A chance to see his routine. We're looking back here. Super height on the handspring double pipe front. <clears throat> oh, but that was uh, an ambitious two and a half twist which didn't quite come off <laughs> lots of control good choreography there very nice Double twisting front, immediate punch front. Not so difficult as if he had more twists. Oh, well, that was nice. Two and a half, punch front full. Sometimes they look a bit wild, but that was a good, well-controlled tumble, as was the double twist there. Needs to be clean here. He's had one fall already. He wouldn't want another, but that was a super triple twist. What a shame. What a shame. That error in the middle. Well, that follows a 13.3 from Frank Baines, an 11.6 from Pavel Karnachenko, and an 11.8 from David Weir. And Hamish scores 11.8 also for Scotland. It has been a long competition. We're just over the three hours now, and the last couple of pieces, the gymnasts really do seem to have struggled to maintain concentration. I must admit, I'm not a big fan of this style of competition. It is long for the gymnasts. Don't forget, they've got a lot of days of competition ahead of them. Why they can't just go one team per apparatus, whether it's lack of judges, but it does, it makes it rather drawn out. And it forces the errors. Fortunately, there's been no injuries, but... Uh, well, Australia here are warming up. They're on a score of 201. To beat Cyprus, they need 239.65. So Which means they need... A big score on Pomelos. <laughs> <laughs> 37, 38. It's a big ask on Pommels. We were, we were talking about them needing 40. Anybody needing 40 on each piece, weren't we? So To do a 240 total. Mm. There's only one team that's going to do that. That's the team there. It's a great feeling going into a final round of the competition, knowing you've got plenty of room, wriggle movement. All four guys. England are going to work this piece of apparatus. So Gianni, Regini Moran wraps up England's bid and they are well clear of the rest of the field by 10 marks. What a celebration this is of English and British gymnastics. Oh, and that's a big skill. First one we've seen connect the squat half into the Kovac. The layout call back to, he had a fantastic parallel bar routine. In fact, he's had a fantastic competition. All four guys from England will be wanting to get into the high bar final, so 
It's a bit of an internal competition. Watch this, whips up, plenty of height, full twist in the double straight. <laughs> One in the bag for England. It's absolutely huge from Gianni. What a storming qualification competition he has had. He was obviously a bit edgy about that dismount, though, because it's unusual to see the coach on the floor, and he made the turn out on that full twist very late. Well. But it was very efficient. He's in the floor final. He's in the vault final. He's in the P-bar final. Will he be in the high bar final? His teammates will have something to say about that. What a great start for England, though. Really impressive first man up. <laughs> Canada now wrapping things up on floor. Just waiting for Rampasad score to come in. It's not in just yet. And Tamin can continue. But yeah, just going back to the maths on Pommel Horse, uh, Australia need to score over 12.7 from each of their gymnasts. Three up, 12.7. Australia, Pommels. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be close. Up Kenji to Mim follows a score of 10.45 from Jason Rampasat. Used every centimeter of the floor there very successfully. Beautiful control on the double front. And the two and a half into straight front. Showing very good flexibility and control on the linkage. Nice control on the landings. And squeezes the triple twist round. Little unsteady on the landing, but uh, a pretty efficient floor routine. Well, Kenji's through a little subdued on the applause because all eyes are on James Hall, who's swinging the high bar at the moment. And he's going clean so far. <laughs> it's that radio commentary, and he's just nailed the landing. One little step, but he's through, and what a bid for an all-around. Hopefully we can bring you that, but we're focusing on Tyson Ball. Huge disappointment on high bar earlier on on that dismount. Well, what can he do on pommel? So looking for a score over 12.7 from each of the gymnasts to go ahead of Cyprus. Well, we've seen gymnasts making mistakes in this final round of the competition. So the coach up again, the gymnast to focus. Well, he's got through a few little wobbles. He'll, he'll breathe a sigh of relief there. It's whether or not Australia now push Scotland out of the top three spot. Got a lot less work to do to make that happen. Gianni scores 13.35 for high bar. That's the eighth highest score for Gianni. James Hall has just been and he's posted the third highest score of 14. Joe Fraser next to go. 
He's competing on three pieces of apparatus here. Can't do the six, but he's already made three of the finals on the pieces of apparatus that he's competing in. This the fourth. Can he make four finals? Lovely swing. Almost effortless super squat dislocation there. Into the full twist in Kovacs. They're going for the big combinations today. And in the straight position as well. It's cat-like with the release and catch. Arms out, lovely. Kachev in that straight position. He shows a super line through the shoulders. Look at that right into handstand, that full pirouette. Every move peaked beautifully. Now, come on, Joe, the dismount. Oh, what a, what a star, Joe Fraser. I cannot believe what I am seeing. What an incredible achievement to even be here. He had his appendix out just weeks ago. He was back in the gym to get ready. He's had a, well, quite frankly, an incredibly disappointing foot injury. And he couldn't come here. He couldn't compete on the six pieces of apparatus. He's done four, and surely he's made the final of all four pieces of apparatus. What an incredible performance from that man. Wow. When you think it can't get any better, they pull a performance out the bag like that. Absolutely so. remarkable. How did he do that? How did he do it? Well, the mark of a champion. Back to Pommels, Australia. Jesse Moore with a job to do. Can he put Australia on the podium and knock Scotland down into fourth? Well, he's working well so far. A little bit of a separation there on the legs, but... Good separation there in the flare. The turn, that's called the flare spindle. Keeps the momentum. Oh, and I'm going to say interesting work. That's another fall from the pommel horse. He's claiming some scalps tonight. That's one full mark off. Not just Cyprus. Struggling with this piece of apparatus. He's got this very difficult skill there, his shoulders. They need to stay in line with the top of the pommel horse. And you can see the anger and frustration. There he does it. Repeats the skill to get the difficulty. The forward travel. Working backwards, real shame. A lot of difficulty in this routine. No hesitation on the pirouette, but uh, has it left the door open? Well, we'll know when the score comes in. It's all going to be on the shoulders of Bakuetti. Well, Felix Dolce. What could have been if he'd not fallen off high bar? It's going to be very, very close indeed. Anita Mia. Oh, oh, he's out. He was right out, but it was such a powerful double front out of the previous front and super double twisting, double back. He, he's really the full package, this guy. He might not have great experience just yet, but give him another year or so and he'll be very strong. Super difficult. Double tuck front. He's really packing the difficulty in two and a half. Punch front full. 
and a very, very clean triple twist to finish there. That will be a big, strong score for Canada. Pitted a little deduction on the landing at the start, but he has been man of the match for the Canadian team. 13-5, Australia, Canada going toe to toe now for the bronze medal place. Cyprus looks like they've got the silver. Big score, 13-5 with a fall. Ooh. Joe, oh, it's huge, it's 14.5 for Joe Fraser. It's absolutely massive. He's, four, he's in the final for the high bar. He's made four finals. He's only competing on four pieces of apparatus here. Surely that will go somewhere to ease the pain that he's been feeling. Well, when you're dealing with the disappointment, there's only one way to come out, and that's fighting. And Joe Fraser's certainly shown us that. Well, I've just seen another fall from Australia on the pommel horse. It'll be interesting to see the final positions. But this young man has played his part tonight. England absolutely streets ahead of the rest of the Commonwealth. They are purely world class. So Jake Jarman, fourth gymnast up for Team England. Rounding off this men's team final for them. Under no pressure. Lovely height and flight there in the straight catch, Ev. Straddle catch, Ev. Good extension on the catch. Beautiful extension. The squat dislocates straight into the handstand. Lovely in bar work. Well, if anything, a little late in the squat half, but it's immaterial. He's going to wind up and kick himself into the history books again. Yes! Full twist in, double back, and that confirms England will take the men's team gold medal at the 2022 Birmingham Commonwealth Games. Well, what an incredible performance from an unbelievable team. And it means everything. It really does. They've pushed the boundaries of what is humanly possible <laughs> and what a celebration there's your champions felix dolce 13.45 for floor Canada go up into the silver medal position ahead of cyprus australia will be fourth Cyprus make history with the first bronze. Never been done before in the team final. The team medal has only ever been shared with England, Canada, Australia and Scotland. So Cyprus there writing themselves into the history books. Fantastic scenes here. Well, despite faltering a little bit, they really were a great team, Cyprus. What celebration here in the men's team final. What a display of what is humanly possible. <laughs> Gianni flying the flag of Commonwealth team champions. Team England take the gold. Canada takes silver. And Cyprus, they take the bronze. What a final. What an atmosphere. What a competition. Every single gymnast there has played their part tonight. 
and it was an epic performance of sheer class of gymnastics, Christine. They set themselves apart from the rest of the field the moment they walked into the arena. And they wrap it off with a 13.4 from Jake Jarman. But that's it. I mean, this will not be the last that you see of these lads. Gianni and Jake are in that floor final. Joe and James are in the Pomelos final. <laughs> Courtney and Joe are in rings as well. Jake and Gianni vault. Joe and Gianni P-bars. And two in the high bar final as well. <laughs> yes. First qualified, first and second all around. James top, followed by Jake. They really have been dominant here. Truly fantastic scenes at the gymnastics. Look at that, Cyprus making history. We thought they'd just faltered at the final furlong, but uh, Australia threw it away. And England finish on a score of 254.55. Canada take the silver. 241.2 and Cyprus with that historic bronze. What a team final we've seen. Scotland finish fifth and Wales in sixth. But the good news is that is just the qualification round for a lot of these gymnasts. So we'll see many of them again as the finals continue here at the Arena Birmingham. What a team final. England take gold.
Welcome back. What an entertaining evening we've had of gymnastics. The England team dominated from start to finish with this emphatic win. Cyprus making history, winning their first ever Commonwealth Games medal. Canada performed exceptionally well to take the silver. And as we've seen at the end of the competition, nerves creeped in. Australia threw away the chance of a medal. And I think for the first time in the history of gymnastics, the English men have topped every piece of apparatus. The all-around tops qualifier on the floor, the pommels, the rings, the vault, the parallel bars and the high bar. The medals will be presented by Harry Murphy, Commonwealth So the medal Games, the presentation party, the medals will be presented by Harry Murphy, Regional Vice President for Europe of Commonwealth Games Federation. Accompanied by Brian Spears, Chair of the Commonwealth and Games And the presenter Federation of Commission. the gifts will be Brian Spears, Chair of the Commonwealth Games Federation Ethics Commission. Bronze medalists, Cyprus. And making history for Cyprus, the men's gymnastic team take the bronze medal. And what absolute delight from them. And actually supporters of gymnastics because they've been a team that we've watched build over the years, become more confident. And this is a big moment for their development. Ilias Yoriu. And for me, the standout performer Yoriu. of the team, Ilias Georgiou. Presentation of the Commonwealth mascot, uh, Brian Spears. You can really see, Christine, how much it means to those guys. Very much so, absolute delight. It's been Silver such a fantastic medalists. competition. The audience have been unbelievable. Canada. And taking to the podium to re receive the silver medal, Team Canada suffered a major setback with their top gymnast out through injury. Felix Dolce. But a very young and promising Matthew team, in Jenner. my opinion, Craig. They've got some really stylish and promising Ruth gymnasts Kelly. here. Well, for me again, the man of the match in the Canadian team, Jason Felix Rampersen. Dolce, performed so well around the competition. Kenji and has really led this team to that silver medal. And now the moment we've been all been waiting Gold for. Medalist. The arena is on its feet. England. 
the 2020 to 2022 Commonwealth Games champions, Team England, with an emphatic win. Some 14 marks between England and Canada in silver. Represented by Joe Fraser. You can hear the applause for Jake the local Jarman. lad. Joe Fraser. Jake Jarman. Courtney Tullock. Courtney Tullock. Top qualifier on the rings. Gianni Regini Moran. There's Gianni Regini Moran. He's and played a fantastic James part this Hall. evening. And James Hall, top qualification for the all around competition. Well, what a fantastic start for this Commonwealth Games. The English men really working with confidence, pride and loads of determination, showing just what great gymnasts they are. There you have it, Team England, we salute you. What a team of gymnasts that, Christine. They certainly are, and actually, they very much complement each other. As we stand for the national anthem. Once again, please show your appreciation for the Commonwealth Games medalist.